Hi, my name is Ilya Gazman. I'm a developer. Over the course of the next episode, I will implement an efficient version of the Cortastic Sieve in Java. To follow up, you need dev skills, basic Java knowledge, and some basic math. Really nothing special. If you got any questions, please comment below or post in the Facebook group that link. Okay, so we are going to factor the number uh, n that it's built from two big, big prime numbers, a and b. We'll start with um, the very basic uh, quadratic sieve. Um, uh, <laughs> format factorization method. So the idea is to write n as a difference of squares, n equal to c power 2 minus d power 2. Then we can search for square numbers who are square minus n. It's also a square. So c power 2 minus n, we hope it to be a, a square. OK, so let's just jump into the Java implementation and see how it works. I'm going to, since the first episode, I'm going to work on some project setup. I'm using uh, OpenJDK 14, but uh, we can probably run it with Java 8. OK. OK, so let's call it Quartatic Sieve Running on Java. Cool. So it's is it save save cool. All right, here we go. So let's start with some basic setup. We are going to factor big numbers, so I'm going to work with big integer. Talking about some a, or call it, let's call it a, and b, whose multiplication is equal to n. Now, a will be some random integer. With, let's start with 10 bits size. Random. Cool. And in RSA, we are actually not using the same bit lengths. So algorithms like um, Fermat factorization method will not be as efficient for it because it's very efficient for numbers that are close to to the root square. So this is why in RSA they are picking numbers that are not exactly on the root. One random is enough for us, and let's make it sad random. Cool. So we have some basics. Let's also control. The size of our primes, size, or let's call it bit lengths. Cool. All right. So now we say that we want to generate two numbers of 10 bit lengths, and then we have an n which is about a million, two times 20. To power 20. Cool. Let's log it. Log. Okay, so our logger will be also somehow dynamic. Generic. We'll get objects and it will print them. Cool.
some space to limit though. Looks good. Alright, so we have log L. Let's log A. And B and N. Cool, so we have something very basic. And then let's solve it. So, so N. And let's convert it to something more elegant so we don't have to see all those logging. Um, how do I extract it? I want to extract the basic class. No. Uh, okay, pause. Pause, pause. How do I pause? Sorry about that. Just I had to place my cursor on the class instance itself. So factor stacked super class. Okay, let's just have a logo or base base fact. Okay, so we'll have start and solve. And we'll deal with that. Cool. So now everything is here. We just need to turn solve into an abstract method. All right. Awesome, so now we are ready to start working. Let's go with a format factorization method. So we will start with n square. Or we actually that it's random. So let's pick random number. So big integer a p r doesn't matter. And it equals to some random number with n bit lengths divided by two. So it must have at least half of the bit lengths of n uh, one of the numbers because it must be uh, one number must be smaller than n squared and one is bigger. So by using that selection, we know for sure that one of the numbers will be there. Make it random, smaller or bigger than this number. Um, all right. Again, sub random. Now, while true, I'm doing that I have a random number and I'm asking the question B uh, subtract N is it a square if it's well subtract N then log I don't have access to log. Okay, then log on it. And the solution is going to be um, it's same. Uh, it will be power two. So the solution is going to be B 
add um, that number, which is called A. So B add A squared with our solution. And how do we know if A is a square? If A square is equals to A power 2. All right, let's see if it stops, which just runs forever. Test one, run. Negative big integer. Okay, so we cannot use negative numbers as our a random. So just ups, absolute values. A run. So A was negative. A was negative because that value was smaller than square. So let's add one. A square is again negative. Why A is negative? Means that B power two is smaller than N. And we are taking n bit lengths divided by 2 plus 1 as a random number. Okay, so let's just ignore it. A compared to 0, very smaller than 0, then return false. Okay, how about now? Okay, now we are not crashing, but there is no solution. Okay, let me debug this. Pause again. Okay, found it, but before let me fix previous issues that I had here for not no logs. Now the problem here was that I played a part two, which is already part two, so it needs to be a square, which provides a an integer result. Then power 2, if it's in still equals to a, then it's a square. Let's try it now. Yeah. So it outputs all the results. Let's stop the log. So it finds a solution. Yeah. So it gives us 994. Um, that's not what I expected. Um, let's see several outputs. Okay. and several solutions. Okay, so none of those is the actual result. Subtract. No, okay, pops. Okay, this is a funny one. What I forgot is when I'm making the objects, those are not primes. So I've been getting other results. What we can do is to call next probable prime. Now it should be better, so I hope. 
Yeah. Now it's able to factor. And my sign is here, so pause again. So sorry. Awesome. So we finally got it working. Now let's play a little bit with numbers and see what we can factor. So let's add some times. Let's say. Um, start time. It's going to be system time and that's going to be milliseconds actually that means a starting time this is what we want those are the milliseconds since the application is started. And let's print it. So milliseconds. Let's do it like that. Awesome. Now we have time. And now let's increase the number, let's say 15 bits. Let's see if we can factor that. Yes, we can, and pretty fast. Let's go up 20 bits. Okay, so it take us Half second to factor that number, and it's starting to get big. All right. And let's go to a little bit bigger. OK. So it starts to take seconds to factor numbers of 22 bits, which is awesome. This is the first method. In the next episode, I will talk about um, improvements that we can add on this method. I'm going to upload the, the codes to, to Git, and you will see a, a share link in the, in the description of the video. So see you next time. Bye-bye. Oh, and don't forget about the Facebook page and likes and comments and all those stuff. See you now.